great good fortune to have been a curious observer and sometimes an active participant in a variety of groups that are looking into this story. And the first thing I recognize from a business school standpoint is that the Lost Colony is what we call the business school, a global brand. This is well known. It was well known 400 years ago. In much of Europe, their first encounter with North America was through the knowledge gained in Sir Walter Raleigh effort to establish a colony for England in the New World. It's still a global story. Anything new, whether it's legitimate or not, that crops up about the lost colony rapidly spans the globe in every media you might assume, from the London Times to the New York Times to the UFO Digest. <laughs> we have a great story here in our own backyard. And you want to know, as almost every audience does, we want to skip to the end of the story. What happened to it? And I think that's part of my reticence to get involved in the Black the Lost Colony story, is that people always want to skip to the end and what happened to the colony. And I, I think I can show you that we miss a lot when we skip to the end. But it's compelling. I gave a talk last year in Exeter, England. You know where that is? That was the center of the Silicon Valley of New World Discovery in the, in the 16th, 17th century. It's where all those great adventurers, the Drakes and the Grenvilles and the Frobishers and the Raleigh's and the Gilbert, I should say, would, would go to raise money to set off on their voyages. And I gave a, a talk at an association of European business historians, and it was on the driest approach you can take to the lost colony story. I was looking at the portfolio theory of risk diversification as deployed in the financing of the Roanoke Enterprise. <laughs> and I put formulas up on the screen, and I did betas and alphas and experiments.